everyone, welcome. And I'm Betsy, and I'm with the Seattle Public Library, and I'm here in my home. Have you seen the home before, my home? Yes, one more time, story time in Betsy's house. And I'm here with Millie, coming up. She wants to say hi. There's my friend Millie. And now she may go for a walk, right, sweetie? Okay, good girl, Millie. And today, we're gonna talk all about these, the beauty of nonfiction. Nonfiction is books that talk about real life things, real people, real facts about animals, real life about everything. And that's really what lots of preschool kids, kids from t learning to talk all the way up, ask a lot of questions about why, what's that? Why do they do that? How does a toilet work? You know, all these questions. So we're gonna talk all about that collection at the library and that place in the library where all these books are kept, right? Okay, but first I wanna do, I want you to warm up your hands, ready? Warm them up. And I wanna also do a land acknowledgement. So as you are warming your hands up, just remember I'm in my home in Seattle, you're in your homes wherever, but in Seattle we are on the traditional lands of the Coastal Salish peoples. And we, um, we want to thank specifically the Duwamish for helping us, um, for taking such good care of our lands and being stewards of our lands, both the Duwamish past and present. So thank you very much. And now, here we go gonna start with open shut them because you know this helps wire my brain to get ready for story time. Does it help you guys too? All right, get your hands up. How many fingers do you have? I have 10. I think you, most people have 10, yeah, maybe, okay. Open, shut them, open, shut them, give a little clap. Open, shut them, open, shut them, lay them in your lap. Creep them, crawl them, creep them, crawl them, right up to your chin. Open wide your little mouth, but do not let them in. Roll them, roll them, roll them, roll them, roll them just like this. Wave them, wave them, wave them, wave them. Send a great big kiss. Does your friend, does, uh, does my friend Erica do this song also when she starts her story times? I think she does, because I saw it the other day on one of the YouTube videos. That's right. All right, here we go. So nonfiction means real facts about real things, right? And there are so many great books out there. One of them is a series called um, the series called Seedlings, Seedlings and Families, Adults. These are the best books for toddlers and preschoolers. Great photographs with simple text and very factual. This one's about goats, right? Fantastic. And there, Seedlings has books on motorcycles and plants and, and lots and lots of animal books, so look for those. I'm going to make a book list for all the books that I talk about, so do not worry about writing them down, adults. I'm going to make a list and I'm going to link it down below. So, so that's one kind of thing. That's, because, that's how um, accessible nonfiction books can be for the preschool, for the toddler and the preschool aged kids, right? Um, there, but one of the beauties for reading nonfiction is that it helps with one of our six important skills. Remember the skills that you need before you start to read? Yes, there's uh, letter awareness, there's uh, print, print awareness and letter knowledge. There is narrative skills like telling stories, but one of the biggest ones is, is building a vocabulary. And nonfiction is made for this because every single page will probably have a new word on it that they can ask, what does that mean? Furrow or what's a seedling? I don't know what a seedling is. And that's lots of chances to have great conversations. So that's one good reason. Kids love nonfiction because they crave facts. 
They want to know the real story behind things, the real life situations. Also, nonfiction can be done in small bites. You can read one or two pages and then put it away and read the and next time you pick it up, you might be reading a book about the ocean or let me, let me find one that has a couple of facts. And then like this one, oh my goodness, this one's called Crossings. And it's Extraordinary Structures for Extraordinary Animals. And if the book is too long, you could read one or two pages. Whoops, there. And then put it aside and pick it up the next time you're interested in it. What I also like about nonfiction is that lots of times they have one piece of the story of the story here about this bridge that they built. But it's a very, um, what's the word I want? It's a short sentence. And then down in the corner here, they have more facts about that bridge. So you can read this for younger kids and older kids. And then if you have older kids with you, you can also read more in depth. It's great for multi um, ages. That's a wonderful book. All right. So schools have traditionally leaned into fiction to teach kids how to read. They are about five years ago, they switched it up and they are totally leaning towards nonfiction because it also helps with different learning styles and kids interests. So just remember that. But enough of all that. Shall we read a book? I think so. I think I think we should. This book is called Up in the Garden and Down in the Dirt. And it's written by Kate Messner and Chronicle Books is letting us read this to you. So up in the garden, down in the dirt. Can you guess what it's about? I think you might be able to. It's about a garden and it goes all year long. So we're going to learn what a garden needs all year long. Starting in the winter, do you see the snow? here and here's the dirt up in the garden I stand and plan my hands full of seeds and my head full of dreams so they're looking at their garden beds figuring out what to put where spring shines sun shines down to melt the sleepy snow the wind whistles through last year's plants and mud sucks at my rain boots it's not quite time nana says down in the dirt things need to dry out and warm up what's down there i ask so do you see this picture this is up this is above ground and this is below ground so i see a plant growing and there the plant the tulip is above and there are the roots below and there is a worm yeah down in the dirt the whole busy world of earthworms and insects digging and building and stirring up the soil they're already working down in the dirt In the garden we snap brittle stalks and scoop rust rustly armfuls and wheel away weeds for the chickens while they squabble and scratch we spread compost all over the soil there's some compost see there might be words you don't know like what is compost it's a good word to ask it's super rich soil with good stuff in it down in the dirt, pill bugs chew through last year's leaves. Here's a pill bug. I give it a gentle poke and they roll up tight and hide in planted suits of armor, a roly poly round. Some people call them roly polies. They're called pill bugs. Up in the garden, it's time to plant. I trail a furrow with my finger and sprinkle seeds in a careful row. Give them a drink, Nana says, and we pat them down and snug to snuggle in the dark. 
Do you see what she's doing here? Do you see what she's doing right there? A furrow is a line in the dirt for the seeds to rest in. It's like a, digging a little line out in the dirt. Down in the dirt, the tomato hornworm rests, waiting for her wings and the leaves where she'll lay her eggs. Up in the garden, carrots plant, carrot plants sprout. Here are the carrots. Oh, pea blossoms bloom. Wasps are on the prowl and honeybees visit with legs loaded with pollen. We had a bee story time last summer. Yes, we did. Talking about pollen bags on their lip legs. I weed and wilt in the sun is so strong, even Nana looks for shade. Down in the dirt, earthworms tunnel deep. I'm jealous of their cool, damp, dark. So we've gone through winter and spring, and now we're in the summer. Remember how hot it was last month in Seattle? It was so hot. Up in the garden, rain shower! Whee! Nana turns the hose on me. Eee! I yell. There's lots of water. And I hide behind the cucumber vines, but their leaves can't save me. I get shiver. I shiver and I laugh. I'm drenched in Nana's rain. But down in the dirt, the water soaks deep. Roots drink it in, and long-legged spider silt walks all over the streams. There's the spider right there. Wow. So it's so important that the plants get water, isn't it? We had to water a lot this summer with our hoses. Up in the garden, there's so much to eat. Ladybugs feed on aphids. Aphids are smaller bugs. Nana crunches green beans and I bite a ripe tomato from the sun. Juice dribbles down my chin. Down in the dirt, the robin's beak finds a cricket, a beetle, a grub. Slugs are scrumptious too. So this bird eats all those bugs. Up in the garden, we pick cukes, cucumbers, and zucchini, harvesting into the dark. The bats swoop through the sunflowers, and I pluck June bugs from the basil until it's time to go to bed. There they are, walking back home. Oh, now it's dark out. Do you see the nighttime, the night scene? Down in the dirt, skunks work their night shift. They snuffle and they dig and they gobble cutworms while I sleep. There they are eating some worms. Wow, this garden is so busy. Up in the garden, the praying mantis wakes to hunt for mosquitoes. I didn't know that. Did you know that? That these bugs, these praying mantises, eat mosquitoes? Wow, I didn't know that. Nana sprays away the aphids, and I'm afraid, and I'm after the grasshoppers, ready to swoosh, but... See, she has a net. She wants to catch a grasshopper. She ready to swoosh, but... Oh, snap! Someone else is faster. Down in the dirt, a smooth, shining garter snake crunches on supper. There's the garter snake. And they are harmless to people. They won't hurt you. Up in the garden, the wind grows cool. Pumpkins blush orange and sunflowers bow to September. Nana ties them together and builds a house oh, for reading out loud together. Look, she put, makes it like an archway or a house. And there she is reading. And what are these down here, you guys? Yes, they're pumpkins. 
Yay! I love pumpkins. Down in the dirt, an orb weaver spins her web. Strand by silken strand, she'll munch on, on the moths tonight. So you see the bugs get caught in that spider web's web. Up in the garden, colored leaves litter the squash vines. And we know the cold is coming. Hurry, hurry and harvest. There's not enough. There's enough for the neighbors too. So they're picking all the fruits and vegetables out of their garden. Down in the dirt, frantic ants gather what they leave behind. They're storing food for the colder days ahead. And these are all little ants holding on to food. You want to get all your food in before it gets too cold and they freeze. The food freezes. It's called a frost. Up in the garden, frost draws lace. Look on leftover leaves where secret egg sacs hang, waiting for the warmth to return. We say goodbye and spread the warm the winter blankets. Down in the dirt, beetles burrow low. Ants scurry home and earthworms curl up tight in the dark. And this is how they're going to sleep through the winter. When Grandpa calls us in for soup, an autumn moon is rising. Up in the garden, dry corn stalks tremble and the wind smells like winter. But the long ripe days of summer still rest in the garden beds. The ladybugs and the bumblebees, the earthworms and the ants all hunkered down hiding, biding their time. Dreaming of sunshine and blossoms and sprouts under the bare arms of the trees and the blackening snow. A whole new garden sleeps down in the dirt. The end. That was a really long story. Did you enjoy that? That was a great nonfiction book. I think so. All right, let's get some wiggles out. You ready? Ho, 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 ho. Let's get our hammers up. Here's one hammer. All right. Do you know this song? It's called Betsy Pounds with One Hammer, and then she pounds with two, and then she has to find more body parts to hammer with. All right. So I've got, and I've got some friends' names in my head here that I'm going to have them help me. Ready? I've got one hammer up. Do you have your hammer? Okay. And I'm going to put my, <laughs> I'm going to put my knee here. Betsy pounds with one hammer, one hammer, one hammer. Betsy pounds with one hammer, then she pounds with two. One, two. You ready? Okay, I'm going to call somebody in to help me. Um, Silas, can you come help me? <gasps> Silas pounds with two hammers, two hammers, two hammers. Silas pounds with two hammers, then he pounds with three. One, two, three. That's my third hammer. Okay, you think of your, maybe you can say your name. I'm just saying names of my nephews. That's who I'm saying names of. Ready? We're going to do three. And this time, Joa and Malcolm pound with three hammers, three hammers, three hammers. Joa and Malcolm pound with three hammers. Then they pound with four. One, two, three. Oh my goodness. Four. My other shoe. Ready? And this time, Megan's joining us. Megan pounds with four hammers, four hammers, four hammers. Megan pounds with four hammers. Then she pounds with five. One, two, three, four, five. And little itty bitty Wilder is going to pound with five. You ready? We have to dunk her head too. This always makes me a little dizzy. Ready? <gasps> Wilder pounds with five hammers, five hammers, five hammers. Wilder pounds with five hammers. Then we all go to sleep. That's right. I think we were building hmm, a tree house. Excuse me, a tree house. How does that sound? Well, speaking of building, you guys know 
that at the Seattle Public Library we have a wonderful collection called the Begin With Books Collection. If you haven't discovered this yet, you are in for a real treat. Inside each kit or each bunny bag, there are five books for preschoolers. One, let's count them together. Two, three, uh, 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 construction, four, and five, building our house. That's what it reminded me of when I did the pounding the hammer song. Yes, five. Also inside of this kit is a music CD that has something to do with the theme. This theme is called building. And this one is by the pop-ups, Appetite for Construction. Also in this bag is an adult book, or a, an adult, I call it an adult resource book. And it has lots of activities to do with kids together. This one happens to be called Tinker Lab. Okay, and also in this bag is a card, and the card will tell you what books are in the bag, so you know what to return in there. It has an activity, and it has two finger plays, and a little bit about early literacy for this age. So all those things are in the bag. That's eight things total in this bag, and there are many different themes. This one is about building. There's other themes like... Um, self-esteem, there's another one called um, pirates, there's one on dinosaurs. There are so many different themes I can't even remember now. Count, um, let's see, one's on counting, so many, so many. But don't fret, you little ones, because I also have a begin with book badge for toddlers. And inside that, they're all board books. And their themes are very different because they're all about, oh, things that go, or out and about, or um, first rhymes, but they're all going to be board books, right? And music, and the rest of it's the same. And for the toddlers, we also have out of diapers for boys and out of diapers for girls. So those are the Begin With Book Collection. I want to show you... <laughs> oh, I can't find it. Uh, this is a flyer you can pick up at the library. But if you go online, you just place a hold like you would any book that's not sitting on a shelf at a library. And you just type in Begin With Books Preschool for the preschool kits. Begin With Books Toddlers for the toddlers. We also have um, two, kit, two subjects of Spanish. And those are for families who have Spanish as their first language. Not for teaching kids Spanish, but to help support literacy with families who have Spanish as their first language. So, that is a great resource, isn't it? Wouldn't you love to open up those bags and see what surprises are inside? I hope so. It's great. So, not only we talked about gardens and we talked about, oh, all sorts of things that nonfiction is, but I just wanted to let you know that nonfiction is also about people, real people in real lives. This is, called, this is a series called Little People, Big Dreams, and this is about Jesse Owens, who is a fantastic, excuse me, a fantastic runner, right? Gold medalist. And then we have also one about she persisted in sports. And it's about all sorts of women that made incredible uh, change the game, it's called. American Olympiads that change the game that made big strides. I have this wonderful book called Libba. Libba, The Magnificent Musical Life of Elizabeth Cotton. She wrote that song called Freight Train. Freight train, freight train, going so fast. Freight train, freight train, going so fast. Please don't sell what train I'm on, so they won't know where I've gone. Do you know that song? Well, this is about the woman that wrote it. You might like to read that story about her. Yes. One book I wanted to tell you about 
was a brand new book called Keeping the City Going by Brian Flocka. And it is all about how the city, how keeps moving even though many people have to stay home or indoors and everybody's wearing masks because of COVID and how these essential workers kept things rolling so that we would get food on our shelves and the power to work in our cities and our metro drivers, our buses and our ambulances running. So this is a wonderful story about keeping the city going. We have funny books. This one's called Top Dog. Oh my goodness, Top Dog. And it just has great illustrations. It's called Junkyard Dog or, I mean, great photographs. This one's Raining Cats and Dogs. So that's a silly one. Now, do you like to eat? I think you do. Yeah, you like to eat? Do you, have you ever cooked anything? Well, we have tons of cookbooks for kids to do with grown-ups. This is a great one. My tip about finding just the right cookbook, kid cookbook, because we're, there's so many of them, is to look for the ones that have pictures of what you're going to need. Because that helps kids key into what they're going to need when they're not reading yet. The pictures will help and it will describe it in steps like this. I love this one. Stuffed tomatoes. Yum. I'm hungry. Yum. And then there are silly cookbooks too, like the Star Wars cookbook. Stormtrooper standoff. That's silly. And let's see what else. C3P oat pancakes. So. What I love about nonfiction is that you try out all these things, these little snippets in each book, and you discover what sparks your interest. You'll be able to discover what really interests your kiddos and what you can and spurs on their imagination. So I hope you've enjoyed this little rundown, the nonfiction lane. When you go into an open library, be sure to ask the librarians where the children's nonfiction is so you can browse yourself. And um, if don't forget to check out down below, check out the book list that I put together of all these books and more. And I hope you've really enjoyed this story time. I have. Don't forget, check out spl.org for more information about when our libraries are opening and the hours and also the YouTube Kids page, Seattle Public Library Kids on YouTube, where you found this one. There'll be more content coming up. So until next time, happy reading. Let's do our closing song. The more we read together, 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 the more we read together, the happier we'll be. Because your books are my books, and my books are your books at the library, right? The more we read together, the happier we'll be. See you next time. Oh, I have to show you my shirt. I did this because we're talking about nonfiction and birds. Yes. See you next time.